I'm mad as hell. I'm mad because it has happened. I'm mad because it continues to happen. Angry and fighting back, Lynn Sweetland can no longer stay silent, opening up about the men who brutalized her. I got something. I was in a lot of pain, and I share that pain. I share that pain with anyone who is being trafficked. Sweet Land was 27, going through a bad divorce, vulnerable when she met two men in Greenville. At first, they treated her with respect, gaining her trust. She traveled with them to Florida for fun. Soon after, the good times were gone. They were referring to each other by different names. Like, okay, this isn't right, something's wrong, because they're not who they say they are. Lynn says she confronted the men and they turned on her, demanding she sell her body for sex. She refused, and the nightmare began. She says they sent her to North Carolina to teach her a lesson. That's when he left me at this guy's house, and while I was there, this guy pulled out a gun, and he made me strip, and there were three other guys there, and I was right in sodomized. Lynn says after that, she did what she was told, going out with another woman, being trafficked at truck stops in several states. Each night, dozens of men. It was 20 to 30 a night, and that was for three months. 20 to 30 a night for three months. And when I think about that, my skin crawls. Lynn says she dropped clues to truckers, hoping they'd help her, but nothing. I was surprised to see wedding rings on their hands, and I'm thinking to myself, you're married, and you're out on the road supporting your family, you go home, and you're having sex with me. And it's not just happening to adults, but children as young as 15 in the Low Country. The D. Norton Low Country Children's Center is helping kids traffic for sex or exploit it. Their cases tripled in 12 months. It was 15 children in 2016, um, which is three times the number that we saw in 2015. More cases, more victims. Some predators are parents themselves, selling their own children out of their homes, sometimes to buy drugs, sometimes to tourists. Cities like Charleston, named number one by Travel and Leisure magazine, can be a magnet for sex traffickers because people buying sex on vacation like the idea of being anonymous. This is a prime area where we're one of, if not the, top destination uh, this, this area is for trafficking in the state. Tourists looking for sex go to websites like Backpage.com, but it's not just tourists. So you've got different workers coming in from all over the southeast, uh, and they're uh, a big customer as well. And they may not know their children. Even with a 16-year-old, you know, they might say that the child's 19. They tell them to say that they're 19, um, which, which for some adults, if they were to purchase sex, they they see that as more acceptable. But it's illegal, and many of the children are trapped. Detective Charlie Benton says they may not see themselves as victims. Saving a child often takes someone noticing the signs and taking action. Open where I'm getting calls from defense attorneys, I'm getting calls from judges, I'm getting calls from Department of Social Services, from um, physicians, um, medical personnel who are seeing things that are, are suspicious to them and allowing us to, to make referrals. So. Lynn finally escaped because of a trucker who picked up her clues and got her out. And now her message and purpose is clear. That's it. She plans to open a nonprofit and push for changes to help other survivors. We need more shelters that are geared towards human trafficking. We need more rehab facilities that are trained on this. We need law enforcement to be more trauma-centered.